Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 54 of my Java video tutorial series. In the last part of this tutorial, we created all this stuff so that our ship would rotate. And in previous tutorials, we made it so that the rocks or asteroids would bounce off the side of our game board, as you see right here. Well, because you guys have asked for it, I'm now going to show you how to make all the asteroids or rocks bounce off of each other. This tutorial is all about collision detection. And because my printer is out of ink, I have absolutely nothing to go by. So I'm going to do this 100% out of my head, except clearly I wouldn't upload it if it didn't work. So let's think about what we need to do here before we proceed. Okay, so on the right side of the screen, basically, I have our symbol of our asteroid or our rock. Now, whenever you want to do collision detection, what you basically have to do is put a rectangle around your polygon or rock because the rectangle object is going to provide you with an object called intersects. And the way that intersects works is it receives a rectangular area or a rectangular 2D shape and then alerts you if one of those rectangular shapes runs into one of the other rectangular shapes and then allows you to do things. So how I'm thinking I'm going to do this is I'm going to use a method called get bounds and that's going to go in my rock object because I want to follow object oriented design principles and keep everything as encapsulated as humanly possible. And what this get bounds method is going to do is it's going to return the upper left hand x and y position as well as the width and height for my rock. So in essence it's going to create a rectangle just like you see here on the right side of the screen. And then using the intersects method I'm going to be able to figure out whenever one of these rectangles bounces into each other and then act accordingly. Now by act accordingly basically what I'm going to do is whenever a collision occurs I'm going to take whatever the x direction of asteroid A is and the y direction of asteroid A and replace it with whatever asteroid B's x and y direction is. So in essence, the asteroids are going to propel off of each other because they're going to exchange x directions. So let's get into the code and see if I can do it. All right, so here I am. First off, I'm going to start with gameboard.java and all the codes available underneath of this video. And I want to make as few changes as humanly possible with this. Now, one thing that I know I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to make sure that I have asteroid arrays and that they sync up between the game board and the rock object. So if we scroll on down through here, you can see right here is where I define my array list that's going to contain all of the rocks that I am going to be using in my game board. And then if we scroll down a little bit further, right here whenever a new rock is added to the rock array list that I have here, I'm going to want to make sure that these are updated. So I'm just going to go rock rocks is equal to rocks. So there's a rocks array list over in the rock object that's going to contain all the rocks that are created. And I'm also going to have one here. And I'm just making sure that these two guys sync up. And as far as I can tell, that is the only change that I need to make right now. So let's jump over into rock.java. And I'm going to make a whole bunch of different changes here. Since I'm going to need to work with rectangles, I'm going to import java at rectangle. So I got that guy in there. And I'm also going to need to create my get bounds method. So it's just a matter of figuring out where in the code I want to put the get bounds method. And I think right here, after we define our rocks, that's as good a place as any. So we're going to be making some changes to move. So that's where I'm going to put the guy. So we're going to go public rectangle is what it's going to return. And get bounds is the name of the method. And this is sort of a common name to use whenever you're using collision detection like we're using right here. And then all it's going to do is it's going to return a new rectangle. And if I want to get my upper left hand corner, I'm going to go super x points. Now this might be different for you depending upon what you're using. But if you're using my code, of course, it's going to work. And then I'm going to go and return the y points for the zero position inside of here. And then I'm just going to return rock width and rock height. And I guessed well on those names. Okay, so that's all get bounds is going to do. Whenever it's called, it's going to create the rectangle and it's going to be based off of the upper x, y position as well as the width and height of my polygon or my rock, whatever you want to refer to it as. Now what I'm going to do, and because I want these collisions to take precedence over the collisions that occur on the outside of the game board, I'm going to create my rectangle and it's going to go rock to check. I'm going to name it. And then if I want to create this rectangle based off of the rocks on my screen, I'm going to just call get bounds. And it's going to create that rectangle based off of whatever the size and shape of the rock is. So then what I want to do is cycle through all the other rocks that are currently on the screen and check if any of them cross into my rectangle. So I'm going to just go, this is 
of type rock, and then my temporary holder is going to be rock, and then rocks, which is the name of the object that I'm using here. And then I'm going to create another rectangle, and I'm going to call it other rock, and this is going to be all the other rocks on the screen. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to get bounds on it as well. And there you go. Now I need to check to make sure that I'm not going to be comparing my rocks to each other. See, like this guy here is the rock that I'm currently checking or moving. What I want to do is I want to make sure that I don't accidentally, because this guy right here is in my array list, I want to make sure that I'm not comparing him to himself because, of course, it would be an exact match. So in that situation, I'm going to go if the rock I'm checking, meaning this rock right here is equal to this or this rock that I'm I want to compare to all the other rocks. I want to make sure that they are not the same. And I'm also going to say other rock. And here's where I use intersects rock to check. And there you go. So what this is basically saying is if the rock I'm checking is not equal to, I'm not checking it against itself, and it intersects with one of the other rocks, I want to do certain things. And you already know what those certain things are. I want to exchange their directions so that they look like they bounce off of each other. So I'm going to go int temp x direction. I'm going to store whatever the value for this rock is in a temporary integer. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the y direction. So there that is. And then I'm going to take this right here. I'm just going to paste that in there to save myself some time. Get rid of that. I'm going to take the current direction and I'm going to save it to the rock that I'm comparing it against. So it's going to look like they are bouncing off of each other. That's what I want to bring across here. And by switching their directions, that's exactly what it should look like. Change that to Y and that's exactly perfect. And then I'm going to go and get the rock and give it whatever the value for the temp is. So this guy right here. And that's how we can effectively change the directions on our two rocks. So it looks like they bounce off of each other. And that's it. Um, as long as I did it right, um, let's file save it. File save that and execute and see if it worked out. And as you can see, yes indeed, the asteroids are bouncing off of each other. Bounce, bounce. Bounce, bounce, and because I also randomize speeds, it helps it actually make it look like it's realistic as it bounces around here on the screen. So that was a fun tutorial. I'm glad it worked out. Leave any questions, comments, or requests below. Otherwise, till next time.